movie in Tamale, where research conducted by the University for Development Studies has revealed a lack of infrastructure for early childhood education in five regions in the north, with a call on government to increase budgetary allocation to that sector. Now, Children Believe International, a non-governmental organization, is appealing to the Ghana Education Service to allocate more resources to early childhood education development in the five regions of the north after research findings by UDS revealed inadequacy in classroom infrastructure, teaching and learning materials, and lack of specialized teachers at nursery and KG levels of education. Here is lead researcher Dr. Chris Anab speaking to JTR News. Country, we've done very well in terms of uh, promoting the training of uh, teachers in the area of special education. Now, many of the colleges of education, uh, University for Development Studies, and University of Cape Coast, University of we all have certificate, diploma, degree programs in early childhood education. But what we are finding up on the ground from this research is that these teachers who go to specialize in the area of early childhood education do not really teach at the early childhood level. They rather prefer to teach at the upper primary or the junior, uh, junior high school level. And, and that is really a, a source of concern because that tender age of education really need professionals who are trained in the pedagogy of how to handle the children in child-centered uh, methodologies. And they have gone to learn that. Yet, they, throughout our research, we didn't find them on the ground. I mean, in some cases, you will find teachers with a diploma in basic education or degree in basic education, but not uh, degrees in uh, early childhood development. And in some of the cases, it was just 0%. You know, a few cases, you have about 20% of the teachers at the kindergarten level in a, a district uh, having qualifications in the uh, degrees in early childhood education. I mean, the situations were quite serious in places like uh, the Busan North districts, where we, we found out also in the Nanuba North districts, there were issues like that where you just cannot find specialized teachers in the, in the, in the kindergarten level of the schools. In the Tolo and Kumbu areas, we did see a few of them, uh, which was, was quite uh, uh, a good thing to note that people are the specialized teachers are teaching at this very important age because once you get that stage wrong then the rest of the child's educational life the child is going to struggle because the foundations are really important that's why we want to emphasize in this respect that the Ghana education service the ministry of education should make a cautious effort to make sure that we are getting the best of uh, qualified specialized uh, teachers be handling the children at this level rather than um, as we presented even in the presentation we still have some of the teachers teaching at this level who are untrained you know so they still have wasi wasi certificates a few of the head teachers we spoke to uh, said some of them uh, feel people don't respect teachers who teach at that level, they feel you are not qualified, you are not competent. That is why you have Now let's speak to a ranking member on the Education Committee in Parliament, Dr. Clement Apak, on these recent developments. Good evening to you, Sam. Thank you for joining us. To, yes, good evening, evening to you and good evening to uh, listeners as well, viewers as well. Right. Now, according to a survey uh, the by the yes. UDS, they stated that there's a huge gap in early childhood education development. They cited uh, inadequate infrastructure. They cited lack of specialized teachers, lack of teaching and learning materials, among others. I'm sure that at the committee level, you've discussed various ways by which we can improve early childhood development. How can the state improve it? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. I'm saying, having listened to the synopsis of the research mm -hmm. and what you have presented, mm. and given what I know, uh, being that I'm a member of parliament for Winston South, I agree 
deal with the research findings. And indeed, I must say that it is a shame that as a nation, <coughs> and in particular, within the last four years, not a lot has been done to improve teaching and learning at the basic level, and especially so at the early childhood stages. The truth is that the foundational levels of education are the most important. Mm. And that is why in the much more advanced democracies, the countries mm. that we look up to, the best of teachers, the best of resources, the best of teaching and learning material is provided at the basic level. That will be from kindergarten to at least upper primary. Because if you can give the kids a solid foundation, then it makes it easier for them to be able to climb the educational ladder. So I agree with the research because, indeed, we seem to have it uh, turned upside down mm. where we seem to neglect. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Please go ahead. Where we seem to neglect the foundational stages and we don't pay attention to the quality and competence of those we are assigned to teach at that level. And yet we expect to get better returns. Mm. Indeed, we are not going to make any progress until we change that trend. Mm. And I am sad to say that the issue is not just about the lack of qualified, specialized teachers to teach from the kindergarten mm -hmm. to the upper primaries. Mm -hmm. It is also about the lack of physical facilities mm -hmm. and teaching and learning material. A lot of the communities may have primary schools, but they don't have kindergartens. Mm -hmm. And in many places where they even have those kindergartens, you don't have the qualified teachers with the right competencies to teach at that level. So how, how, how do we tackle this holistically? Well, I have uh, made the case just earlier today. There was a, a statement from the member of parliament for Sisala West, you know, complaining about the dilapidated nature of basic school infrastructure. And in my contribution, I pointed out that if you look at the whole country between 2018 and 2020, only 135 kindergartens were added across the nation. In terms of primary school buildings, only 100 were added. If you look at junior high schools, only 257. As we speak now, Ghana, per the statistics, statistics given by GES itself, <coughs> has only 14,956 kgs. Primary school blocks that we have, 15,000 391. Junior high schools, 11,383. Clearly, that cannot be enough for a country whose population is youthful. So we need to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I think we ought to, as a committee of parliament, engage the minister and the GES specifically on providing taking and learning material, which as we speak is even not available. Uh, mm -hmm. with the coming into being of the new curriculum. Mm -hmm. And also then look at the availability of physical infrastructure as well as the training of specialized teachers to take care of those lower levels of our educational structure. Now, uh, you, you, you mentioned the unavailability of approved textbooks amid the current curriculum. It's also a, a subject of concern for the Ghana National Association of Teachers. How then do we tackle it? Well, I have raised this issue several. I think ever since the government made the decision to change the curriculum about two years ago, I've always argued that I thought the rush to scrap the old curriculum and the books associated thereof before the introduction of the new curriculum mm -hmm. with its own books was not going to serve as well. I have constantly battled with the, the Minister for Education now, Minister for Energy, the former boss of the uh, NACA, uh, on this issue. And it, it is a shame 
that two years down the line, we have introduced a new curriculum, yet the appropriate books expected to have been designed to go with the new curriculum are not in the system. And yet we expect teachers, we expect students to be able to engage in effective teaching and learning. We are not doing ourselves a well for good by this attitude. Mm -hmm. But what is even more worrying, that in the 2020 budget, provision was made to produce millions of teaching and learning material mm -hmm. for kindergarten, lower primary, and upper primary. Mm -hmm. As we speak, the 2021 budget has failed to mention or capture that. And even in the budget estimates that we just passed, Neither the ministry nor the HES made any pronouncement on those. Mm -hmm. And so I am preparing to file a question mm -hmm. to find out why we voted monies for the production of millions of teaching and learning material in consonance with the new curriculum. And yet today, as we speak, teachers don't have access to teaching material based on the new curriculum, and students don't have the requested books based on a new curriculum. Somebody must answer to that. Absolutely. Somebody must answer to that. And we'll be coming back to you later on after you file your questions and see whether those answers will have been given. Thank you very much for speaking to us this evening, Dr. Clement Apak. He's a ranking member of the uh, Education Committee in Parliament and also the Member of Parliament for the Bosa South constituency. That's it for Insight. We'll be back after this break.